Hi, welcome along to another edition of the International Weather Wars. We're going to start with news from the KUAC FM website. Connecting Alaska to the world and the world to Alaska. Thank you, KUAC. National Science Foundation grant to boost HARP. To the University of Fairbanks, Alaska. Geophysical Institute director says $9.3 million dollars five-year grants from the National Science Foundation will enable the university to maintain the HARP facility and expand operations. McCoy says the HARP station is the most powerful of three ionospheric research facilities on the planet. It uses hundreds of high-frequency radio transmitters and antennas to probe the ionosphere three ionospheric research facilities on the planet that is debatable and the comment the next four or five years the ionosphere should get a lot more exciting you should see in the winter a lot more dynamic aurora and for those of you that follow the harp thing you will know that it is possible they've stated that it's possible to create artificial aurora so keep that in mind over the next four to five years in the winters you should see a lot more dynamic auroras you know what that means harp is on so another little snippet of information to pick out of this is we can measure sea ice we can look for aircraft or ships out in the arctic ocean so it probes the ionosphere it measures sea ice it can find aircraft and it can find ships and that's a really varied CV for a project ionospheric research finding ships in the ocean yeah okay does the story check out indeed it does University of Alaska Fairbanks National Science Foundation funds creation creation of research observatory at Gakona Moving back over to Sweden and the recently announced news of the cancellation of the Scopex geoengineering experiment in Counterpunch there's an article there's an interesting piece to um, pick out of this article is the piece that they find worth quoting at length okay there are serious problems in terms of governance and decision making in relation to Scopex we find it remarkable that the project has gone so far as to establish an agreement with the Swedish Space Corporation on test flying without, as we understand, having applied for any permits or entered into any dialogue with either the Swedish government, its authorities, the Swedish research community, Swedish civil society or the Sami people, despite the controversial nature of Scopex. So that's some extra information. When we was talking about this a month or so ago, a few months ago, we were saying how, take note, it's all being agreed with the Swedish Space Corporation. And there you have it, where it's confirmed that it wasn't even negotiated with the Swedish government. It tells you a lot about the people trying to carry out the experiments, that they wish to bypass governments. Why would they want to bypass governments? Because they don't adhere to the regulations that governments set regarding the environment or such like. So we're talking about Harvard. We're talking about David Keith at Harvard. We're talking about Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation. These are key names. Now the news of the cancellation of that project in Sweden even got as far as Guam, which is good to know, isn't it? So mentioning David Keith and Harvard, David Keefe sees it as a setback, what's happened in Sweden. The project said it would use the coming months to try and win over opinion in Sweden and build support for an eventual test. So do not take your eye off the ball there. It finishes up with, if blocked in Sweden, the test could move to the United States, though likely not until next year, 2022, Keefe told the Thomson Reuters Foundation. So that they haven't taken their eye off Sweden and if they do they'll be focusing on the united states so let's just keep an eye out for that there's some more information on the harvard crimson website 
SEAS researchers postpone test flight for controversial geoengineering project to block sun. But remember, of course, Bill Gates was saying it's not about blocking the sun. But there's the people that are doing it, Harvard, saying, funded by Bill Gates, saying, yep, it's to block the sun. A little bit contradictory there, but, you know, we'll work it all out. Oh, there you go, Harvard Crimson. The project is supported in part by philanthropist Bill Gates through SEAS's Solar Geoengineering Research Programme. The project will likely be postponed until 2022 to allow time for those reviews. So they're not, they're not stopping, they're not going anywhere. They're just waiting for the pressure and the public heat to fall off. Then they'll have another go, just like they've been trying for the last God knows how many years for this. It's not going to work though. David Keith does make comment on the decision. He says it's totally legitimate for them to say that it's a risk. But he thinks it's important to say that that's not consistent with what climate scientists have said. So it's going on above their heads. But because climate scientists say it won't be a problem for them, they should just let it happen. Right, David Keith? Really? Okay. If that's the case, do it above your own house, friend. Hey, do it above your own house. How about you do it above Harvard University? Right, don't worry about you need clean air or clean skies to do it. Clean up your own skies above Harvard, right? And then you can do it above Harvard, can't you? You don't have to do it all sneaky like in, in the middle of nowhere in Sweden. And just to continue with the article, the attitude from the Sami Council Vice President is good. She said her organisation is very, very against the testing of solar geoengineering projects anywhere, citing long-term risks. Nice. That's going to send a message to these Harvard people, to David Keith. People are paying attention and you're not going to get what you want anywhere. Also, that Sami council person said that the reason they turned down the council's invitation to meet and discuss it because that would be akin to negotiation. Respect. That is serious. It's like, no, we don't want you to do it. No, we're not coming to have a chat about it because that would be negotiating. It's like, the answer is no, you cannot do it. That's how the public needs to respond. No means no. You don't go along for a chat about it. You don't say, oh, it's under review then. It's like, no, it means no, go away. David Keith, Harvard, go away. The World Meteorological Organization. So it has a part on their website, uh, the World Weather Research Program, expert team on weather modification. This is a register, all go, I'd say, you all better go and make a cup of coffee for this bit, eh? it's going to take forever. Okay, so this information is from 2005-2006. The Register of National Weather Modification Projects is an inventory of activities within member countries related to weather modification. This present register is based on information obtained from member countries on experiments and operations sponsored by government agencies or private concerns that took place during 2005-2006. So you can see there's a few countries mentioned there, but not all of them, even though they've reported, not all of them do have programs or active programs. In other words, they do have programs, but they're just not active. So what I'll show you there, the ones with the red ticks are the ones that have active programs. The ones with a green cross in 2005-2006 did not have a project. So I will go through this list telling you in brief, but there is a link to this, also the other stuff, but in the information section of this video, if you follow the link to this and then you can open up each individual country if you have an interest per country, or you can open up the whole list, it gives you every detail you could want to know. The amount of funding, the year it starts, what sort of project, um, whether it was active or not in 2005-2006. Also, the Bureau Department addresses contact names, contact details, every piece of detail you could want about who's doing what, it's on this list. So we'll go through the countries in brief, and we'll make it as brief as possible. So Austria won. Their programme was active in 2005-2006. They were busy with hail suppression. The start year of their programme was 1981. 
if you want to look into that some more it's called the hail pad project and there's also the hail pad project styria styria in austria their program wasn't active but they do have a program which was started in 1985 bosnia and herzegovina had three programs or three reports one of them wasn't active but two of them were they were both for hail suppression and started in 1975 bulgaria had an active program it was hail suppression which was started in 1969 canada active programs hail suppression as well which was started in 1996 germany programs were active also hail suppression one was in 1975 started in 1975 the other was started in 1981 greece had an active program in 2005 2006 it was also hail suppression and their program started in 1984 guyana no program iceland no program whatsoever japan their program was active in 2005 2006 involved in precipitation enhancement that's rain enhancement and the start year was 1994 jordan's program was not active in 2005 2006 but they do have a precipitation enhancement program don't know what the start year was on that south korea they had an active program in 2005 2006 it was for precipitation enhancement and the program was started in 2003 the republic of macedonia they had an active program it was for hail suppression and it was started in 1971 malaysia there's two reports the program was active in 2005-6 both for precipitation enhancement one says the starting year was 1997 and the other one just says every year so presumably from 1997 mongolia had an active program in 2005 2006 it was for precipitation enhancement as well and it was started in 2006 morocco had an active program in 2005 2006 it was it was also for precipitation enhancement it was started in 1984 nigeria did not have an active program but they are involved in study and research with a start year of 2007 Norway and Portugal have no program in place Romania had an active program in 2005 2006 for hail suppression it was started in 2006 and the funding involved was 662,000 US dollars that's over half a million US dollars Russian Federation had an active program in 2005 2006 they were busy with precipitation enhancement hail suppression and fog dispersal the precipitation enhancement program started in 1986 the hail suppression program started in 1960 and there is no start date given for the fog dispersal program South Africa no program switzerland no program now, interestingly due to modern politics and wars syria had an active weather modification program in 2005 2006 it was involved in precipitation enhancement it was started in 2005 and it was called the rain enhancement project if you wish to look at that further trinidad and tobago no program uzbekistan had an active program in 2005 2006 the hail suppression program was started in 1969 the precipitation redistribution program was started in 1994 and the funding given whether that's combined or yearly i'm not sure two million us dollars that's uzbekistan spending two million us dollars on weather modification hail suppression precipitation redistribution from 1969 and 1994 moving on if you're still awake 
hopefully you are. Saudi Arabia joins efforts to reduce global carbon emission. We will jointly develop innovative methods to irrigate from treated water, cloud seeding and other resources. So Saudi Arabia looking to be more involved with cloud seeding. Over to the Ukraine, hail suppression project. The Soul of Ukraine Foundation, jointly with the Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, presents a ground weather correction technology, hail suppression and precipitation control of a new generation. The main distinctions between this system and other existing ones are as follows. The efficiency of generated aerosol exceeds the efficiency of the systems currently in use by three orders of magnitude, 1000 times. The generated aerosol is practically not subject to aging and reduction of activity over time. In other words, it hangs around a lot longer. A few German language speakers out there, there's a German site dealing with weather modification. We know that because it speaks about silver iodide. The UK's Guardian, China sandstorms highlight threat of climate crisis. So remember, it's a climate crisis, always the climate crisis. And we'll just touch on further south, China's economic powerhouse has suffered under drought conditions since late last year with authorities here increasingly resorting to cloud seeding to induce rainfall. But climate crisis. Okay, probably just enough time to say I hope you enjoyed that roundup of the news, keep you fully informed. The more information you have, the better the decision you can make about you and your life and the people around you when you educate them can make better decisions about what they're doing in their lives. When you have information restricted from you, you have you make restricted decisions. It's simple. Look after yourselves, take care. See you next time.